Hey, what's up guys? It's Darkham Duels, and today we're going to be doing a Falafel for Right for Deck Profile. So I'm really excited for this deck because this deck is probably one of the coolest OTK-based decks that reminds me of Five Nights at Freddy's, and is a fantastic deck to play around with if you're looking for something that can go really, really cute and then get really, really scary really quickly, which is what's really amazing about this deck. It's a very OTK-based deck that can help you OTK with the greatest of ease against your opponent, so bringing out some really cute and cuddly and then not quite so cute and cuddly boss monsters to be able to just slice and dice up the competition so without further ado guys don't forget to like comment subscribe hit the bell on there so you can come bar notification squad and definitely check out the patreon down in the description below for all those awesome rewards like getting your name description every single video getting a signed card to the mail or even getting to request a deck profile every single month to your patron along with test 10 so without further ado Let's get straight on into this. So first off, we're going to be playing three copies of Falafel Dog. So Falafel Dog, when this card is normal or special summon from your hand, you can add an Edge Gym Saber or Falafel Monster from your deck to your hand, but you can only use the effect of this card once per turn, and you can't add another copy of itself, which is okay because basically you're going to be using this card as a combo starter to be able to grab all the cards you need out of the deck. We're then going to be playing three copies of Falafel Penguin. Falafel Penguin lets you during the main phase special summon a Falafel Monster from your hand. If you have another copy of itself, you can only use the effect of one twelve this card's face upon the field, and if this card is sent to the graveyard as a fusion material for the fusion summon of a right for fusion monster, you get to draw two and then discard a card from your hand, which is great for this deck just to be able to add additional cards and be able to dig through the deck a little bit faster to get more plays. We then play two copies of Falafel Dolphin. Falafel Dolphin is really good because it lets you target a toy vendor in your grave, set it, and if uh, if you do, you get to send one Falafel Monster or Edge Gym Sabers from your deck to the graveyard. And if this card is sent from to the graveyard as a fusion material for the fusion summon of a monster, you can uh, shuffle into the deck one of your fusion spells or polymerization cards that's banished during your graveyard, which is really helpful just to be able to get you additional searches later on in the game. We then play three copies of Falafel Bear. I still think three Falafel Bear is fantastic in this particular build because Falafel Bear has the ability that you can send this card from your hand or field to the grave to set a toy vendor directly from your deck to your spell and trap card zone and you can trigger this card to target a polymerization in your graveyard to add it back to your hands. So this card is an overall probably one of the better cards in the entire deck because it can get you so many additional plays uh, in the build. We then play two copies of Falafel Wing. Falafel Wing is a fantastic two of in this build because it has the ability that if this card's in your grave and you control a toy vendor, you can banish this card from the grave and then target another Falafel monster in your graveyard and banish it as well. And if you do, you draw a card. Then you can send a toy vendor you control to the graveyard as well with this effect and then draw an additional card. So basically banish this into Falafel from the graveyard, draw a card. Send a toy vendor from your side of the field after that first draw to the graveyard, draw another card. Then the toy vendor will go off and let you add a Falafel monster from your deck to your hand. This card can essentially be a plus three, which is is fantastic. I love playing this card in the deck, and it's probably one of the reasons this deck is so consistent. We then play a single copy of Falafel Owl. Falafel Owl is a walking polymerization that when this card is normal or special summon, you can add a polymerization from your deck to your hand, and it also has the ability that you can pay 500 life points to fusion summon a fright for fusion monster from your extra deck using monsters in your hand or field as fusion material. So it's a walking poly, and it searches a poly on summon, which is fantastic. One copy of Falafel Cat. Falafel Cat is really good because if this card Card is sent to the graveyard as a fusion material or a fusion summon. For a fusion summon, you can target one of the polymerizations in your graveyard and add it back to your hand. You play a single copy of Sheep because Sheep can bounce a Falafel on your side of the field back to your hand to special summon this card to your side of the field, which is really, really cool because it has the ability that if you control a Falafel monster, then you can special summon this card from your hand and then return one other Falafel monster you control to your hand to special summon an Edge Imp monster from your hand or graveyard, which is fantastic. You just need it as a one of though because it only comes up every so often in the build, but but it is a fantastic one of in the deck. We then play three copies of Edge Imp Scythe. Edge Imp Scythe is crazy because you can actually fusion summon on the first turn. This is a very going second deck, but you can actually fusion summon on the first turn using this card because during your opponent's main phase, quick effect, you can reveal this card in your hand to fusion summon a for right for fusion monster from your extra deck using monsters from your hand or field as fusion materials, including this card in your hand. So if your opponent chooses to go first, you can actually make this card going first and make something like a Cruel Whale on your first turn, which is really, really cool. Also, if a fright from fusion monster you control would be destroyed by battle or by card effect, you can manage to scarf from your graveyard instead, which is a really good effect. 
We then play three copies of Edgem Chain. Edgem Chain is really good because when this card declares an attack, you can add another Edgem Chain from your deck to your hand. And if this card is sent from your hand or field to the grave, you can add a Ferrite for card from your deck to your hand, which we play plenty of Ferrite for cards in the deck, like Ferrite for Repair, Ferrite for Fusion, and a couple of other cards in the deck, like Ferrite for Patchwork, that can just immediately grab out of the deck. We then play for the last Ferrifer or Edgent Monster playing a single copy of Sabres. Sabres is really good because Sabres has the ability to, if this card's in your graveyard, you can place one card on the bottom or top of your deck and then be able to special summon this card in defense position and it, you can only use its effect once per turn. So it's a really, really good card and it helps you get like one or two cards out of your hand that you don't need. And it's just an overall fantastic card in this deck. And then we play three copies of Ash Blossom. I've actually been debating dropping the Ash Blossom for three copies of Dark Ruler No More. That is an option for you guys if you want to play Dark Ruler No More over the copies of Ash because if you go a second, you can OTK your opponent with the uh, copy of Dark Ruler. You can't OTK through the Dark Ruler because it makes your opponent not be able to take damage but it can help you board wipe your opponent to set up the only reason i didn't play it in this particular build is because i figured i could slow my opponent down with the ash enough to be able to otk during the following turn because you always want to go second so the copies of ash are there for that reason over dark ruler because you can't inflict damage when you use that card also you can put in super polymerization if you want to over this but then you have to put in uh starving venom and mud dragon into the extra deck which is options for you guys as well so let's get into the spells guys so for the spells, we're going to be playing some really interesting spells in this deck. So we're going to be playing a single copy of Fright for Repair. This card is a really interesting card, and usually the card that you're going to be sending to the graveyard off your crew well, because it has the ability that you get to target a Fright for Fusion monster in your grave and return that target to the extra deck. Now, that doesn't sound any that really that good, but then you can spell summon a Falafel or an Edgem monster from your graveyard as well. But the really good effect of this card is you can banish it from your grave to spell summon a Falafel or Edgem monster from your hand, which is usually why you're going to send this card to the graveyard off your cruel whale summon we then play a single copy of for right for fusion for right for fusion is basically says hey you get to fusion summon like a miracle fusion if you guys are unfamiliar with heroes what miracle fusion does and this card is you get to fusion summon one monster by using materials in your graveyard as the materials to fusion summon in this case fusion summon a for right for monster from your extract by vanishing materials listed on it from your field or graveyard and you only use this card's effect once per turn we then play the most iconic card in the entire deck which is three copies of polymerization you got to play that artwork if you're going to be playing this deck because it's just super cool and what it does is is you get to fusion summon one fusion monster from your extra deck using monsters from your hand or field as fusion materials which is a really simple effect but basically this card is the card that you need in the deck all the time to be able to go for your plays we then play three copies of for right for patchwork patchwork is probably one of the most important cards in the entire deck because it has the insane ability that you get to add an edge monster and a polymerization from your deck to your hand which is a fantastic effect it's basically a plus one, but you can only activate each of its effects, or you can only activate it once per turn. So it's going to add that edge in monster and a polymerization directly from your deck to your hand, which is really good because it can search your copy of Scythe, Chain, or your copy of Scissors from your deck to your hand, which is really, really good just to be able to grab those or Sabres from your deck to your hand, which is a really good effect just to be able to add them from your deck to your hand with a polymerization. Overall, really good card. We then play three copies of Foolish Barrel Goods because the goods are really good for... <laughs> goods are really good for a lot of different cards like your copy of Repair or your copies of your Toy Vendor because it's essentially like a search for the deck too. Because when Toy Vendor touches the graveyard, you get to add a copy of an Edge of Sabres or a Falafel from your deck to your hand. And it also has the ability that you get to once per turn discard a card to draw a card and then show it. And if it's a Falafel, you can special summon a monster from your hand. Otherwise, you discard the card you drew, which is a really good effect just to be able to get those cards out of the deck and be able to dig through the deck a little bit more. So that's it for the main deck, guys. Let's get into the extra deck. So for the extra deck, the extra deck has changed quite a bit because in the previous build, we were playing True King of All Calamities, but that card has been since banned. But you have a lot of different cards in the entire deck that you can replace it with, which I'm excited to show you guys. So first off, we're going to be playing two copies of Sabretooth. Sabretooth is very important to play as a two of in the deck because when this card goes off, it is insane and you're probably going to win. Because what it does is when this card is fusion summoned, you can target a Ferrite for a monster in your grave and special summon it. And if all and then all Ferrite for monsters you control gain 400 additional attack. And if this card was fusion summoned, 
common using three or more materials. It cannot be destroyed by battle or by card effects either. And you have to use a Frightful monster plus one or more Falafel or Edgem monsters. You're usually going to use two Falafels or Edgems and a Frightful to go into this card. It's going to get that monster born effect. So basically just using a Falafel and a Edgem or two Falafels or two Edgem monsters to go into this card with whatever Frightful monster you just want to get right back on the field because it's going to just fish it out of the graveyard and put it back on your side of the field. I then played two copies of Tiger. Uh, a lot of builds just play one. I still really like two just in case one gets destroyed because it has the ability that you go into this card with an edge and saber and another falafel monster and when this card is fusion summoned you get to target cards on the field up to the number of fusion materials used for this card's fusion summon and destroy them and all for I or all for I for monsters you control gain 300 attack for each falafel monster and for I for monster you currently control but you can only control one copy of tiger so this card's really good because if you have six a full field of six or even five they're all gaining 1400 off of this and then 400 off of this which is an additional right off the bat because you're usually going to combo these two together they're going to gain around 1900 each which this is going to go to 39 or 38 and then this is going to go way up the chain as well which is really really cool just to be able to get that additional attack points i then play two copies of cruel whale cruel whale is really good in the deck too i bumped it down because you can't go into true king of all calamities and it's a level nine it has the ability to use any edge and a falafel and if this card is fusion summon you destroy one card on both players field and then once per turn quick effect you can target one fusion summon monster you control and send a for uh, for card from your deck or extra deck to the graveyard except another copy itself and if you do the targeted monster gains attack equal to half the original attack of the mon if it was a monster but you can also send spells and traps because it just says a for for card which is why you can send your copy of for for repair to the graveyard off of its effect because it just says for for card which is what's really cool about its effect we then play a single copy of Kraken. Kraken is really cool because what it does is it can attack. You can uh, target one monster upon it controls once per turn and send it to the graveyard, and it can't attack directly this turn. And this card can t make two attacks, and then during the end of the battle phase, you switch it to defense. So it gives you a little bit of a defense potential, which is what's really cool about the card. We play a single copy of Wolf. I did throw the Wolf back in from the previous build. I realized it was kind of silly not to play the Wolf because Wolf is just really good to be able to OTK. Because if you put like five materials into this card and you have your copy of for right for um tiger on your side then you can just completely otk your opponent really really easily and also it gets an attack for every material you put into it which is why this card is so good in this deck we then play for the ling monsters i'm only playing just two which is a single copy of appaloosa the appaloosa is really good because it's easy to put multiple materials on the field and be able to go into this to get you negations and a single copy of cross sheet because it is a um it's a fusion deck it's really good and it's really interesting about cross sheet because if you make cross sheet and then you fusion summon under the cross sheet, then you can immediately get one of the materials back on your side of the field and then link three cards away, which is the cross sheep, whatever the monster you fusion summon, and then what you special summon off the cross sheep's effect to go into Appaloosa, which is what's really easy about this particular deck. So instead of playing number or instead of playing True King of All Calamities, I'm playing a nut copy of number 38 because it gives me additional negations. It's easy to go into because you have a bunch of level eights in the extra deck, which is what makes it really easy to go into, like your copy of Kraken, your copy of Saber tooth it's not super hard to go into this card and negate spells so you can end with this card if you didn't otk just to give you additional spell negations locks down graveyard so you play a single copy of abyss dweller number 60 because it can double the attack draw two discard one or revive something from the grave and then a copy of bahamut shark because you do play the copies of penguin and dolphin to go into your copy of totally awesome which is fantastic to go into totally awesome i go into this card a lot just to protect my otk which is what's really helpful for the particular deck and it's super easy to go into because you just go bahamut shark and then toad and then you totally like have the game haha -ha, totally have the game because it's totally awesome so anyways guys this is dark room duels don't forget to like comment subscribe definitely don't you think this deck down in the comments down below it's a fantastic otk deck and it's really really fun to play around with this deck because it's just really really good overall like it's a fun deck to play with it's not super expensive to pick up a copy or pick up this deck because it's just very budget like the main deck the majority of the stuff was commons or or, or maybe even like super rares to pick up, but the rest of the main deck is just really cheap. So anyways, guys, this is Dark Arm Duels. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell on there so you can come part notification squad, and we'll see you guys in the next video. See you later, guys.